In this lesson, we're gonna apply watercolor washes over the top of a pen and ink drawing. Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this lesson we're going to continue on with our last lesson where we created a pen and ink drawing of an iguana and in this lesson we're going to apply watercolor washes over the top to complete the image. Now in the last lesson, as I mentioned, we created a pen and ink drawing of this wonderful iguana and if you missed that video, I'll leave a link to it appearing somewhere on your screen right here so you can watch that first if you want to. But if not, you can watch this video and go back and watch it later. In this video, we're going to be applying watercolor washes over the top of the pen and ink drawing. And in this lesson, I'm going to be using Cotman watercolors by Windsor and Newton. Now I'll be using Grumbacher Golden Edge brushes to apply the watercolor. I'll be using two brush sizes, a number four round and a double zero round. Now, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, I would encourage you to subscribe and click that notification bell so you're notified when we post new videos and we cover a broad variety of drawing and painting subjects and mediums here. Now, if you want to go a little bit deeper with your drawing and painting skills, of course, we have a wonderful membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media, including our line and wash course, which is what we're covering in this video. There's also weekly live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to learn more about our program, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can click on it and check it out. Now, if you want to just get your feet wet and check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, I'll leave a link for that in the description below as well. And you can check out a few of our courses and ebooks for free. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in to this process of applying watercolor paints over the top of a pen and ink drawing. Before we dive into the watercolor application process, I want to speak for a minute about colors and the colors that I'm going to be including in this painting. For this particular painting, I am trying to exploit what's called a secondary color scheme. Secondary colors are made by mixing two primary colors together, so the secondary colors are orange, purple, and green. These colors are equal distant from each other on the color wheel and form what's called a color triad. This means that we're going to get a lot of pop and contrast from these colors, but since we are limiting our palette, meaning that we're only using a few colors, we're going to ensure harmony and unity in the piece as well. This is, of course, called a color scheme, and this is the color scheme that we're going to exploit and pull out in this particular painting. So we'll begin here by just mixing up a few colors here on our palette. And since we're gonna be sticking with mainly a secondary scheme here, meaning we're gonna be working with purples, oranges, and greens, I'm going to go ahead and isolate a few purples, oranges, and greens. I'm gonna start with Indian yellow, or I'm sorry, Indian red here at the top. And then there's a bit of uh, purple lake underneath. And then there's a mixture of cadmium orange and yellow ochre off to the right. And now a mixture of sap green and hooker's green down a little bit lower here on the palette. I'm also going to pull in a little bit of intense blue here with the green so that we have a little bit of a range of a cooler green to a warmer green since we're seeing both cooler and warmer greens on the body of the iguana. And since some of our greens are even still a little bit more blue, we're going to pull in a little bit of the viridian hue, which is obviously a little bit more of a cooler green. So this is the basic palette that we're going to work from here. And of course, we're going to use uh, some additional colors to add to these colors to add a little bit more variety. You can see here I'm picking up a little bit of lemon yellow here to create uh, basically a more yellow green. Um, the green that we see on the body of the iguana is quite unique. It is uh, pretty bright in some areas and pretty intense in some areas and then also a little bit more subdued in other areas. So we're going to start with this mixture that we've created here and we're going to start just on the lower portion of the body. We're going to start with light glazy type applications and then slowly we're going to get a little bit more intense with our applications. This is how I like to approach watercolor painting through a layered approach. You can see while the surface is still wet I am adding some of that mixture of cadmium orange and yellow ochre and allowing those colors to bleed together. We do see a little bit of a transition or gradation of colors throughout the body and we'll try to replicate that in the watercolor painting here. 
So in this case, I'm working my way up from the bottom, but uh, in just a minute, we'll change and uh, I'll start working from the top to the bottom, of course. But uh, this area seemed like a pretty safe area to begin whenever I start uh, painting, whether it's with a watercolor painting or uh, really with any painting medium. I usually like to start in an area where I feel comfortable. A lot of times this is uh, actually the focal point of the image. In this case, it's not the focal point, but I typically like to start in a place where I can feel comfortable and kind of create a rhythm for myself uh, so that when I get to some of those more complex areas or more difficult areas in the painting, I feel a little bit more confident. But what you might notice at this point is I have failed to tape down the painting at this point. So I'm realizing this at this point in time as well. Uh, the, the drawing is actually taped to the surface, but I have not taped out the borders here. And of course, if I want to have nice, sharp borders around the edges, then I need to rectify that. And as you can see at this point in time, I did go back and tape off the borders. That's going to allow me to get a little bit uh, looser with the watercolor applications, of course. Well, you can see we're working our way up to the upper portion of the pitcher plane and the head of the iguana. And on the right side of the body, we have some fairly light values. In fact, we're seeing strong contrast here between the dark values and the light values. And light values appear almost white in some areas, but we're going to add a bit of color here. So I'm putting down a very, very light glaze of a cooler green initially, but I'm also going to work in some of those purples and also some of those oranges here as well. So we're going to have these transitions that happen throughout the painting where the colors basically uh, transition from purples and oranges to greens and, and back again. So I'm trying to create this transition, this unique uh, layering of colors here. And you can see it's very light on the right side, but underneath the, uh, the mouth of the iguana where we have some shadow, we can be a little bit more intense with our colors. So we're laying down a bit of that earthier orange here. Again, this is a mixture of uh, Indian red. There's also uh, obviously a lot of cadmium orange and uh, a bit of yellow ochre in the mixture as well. You'll notice that I'm relying quite a bit on the pen and ink applications to create the darker values. And uh, when you create a pen and ink drawing with watercolor, like we're doing here, uh, you can rely on the pen and ink to develop the values, of course, and uh, rely on the watercolor to simply add the color. So since we've got our values in place, I'm concentrating mainly on adding the colors. Although the colors that I do add, they're gonna have uh, a bit of variety as far as the value goes. So some of the colors are gonna make some of the areas a little bit darker in value naturally. As soon as you can see these uh, transitions between different colors start to develop, the way I'm able to achieve this is basically by keeping this area wet uh, and by adding a bit of wet watercolor into areas where it's already wet, that's going to uh, encourage some bleeding to happen between the different colors. Now, I'm not, I'm obviously not doing that in every location. Like right now, I'm working on the leg here in the foreground and this area, I'm applying wet watercolor to a dry surface. But in those areas where we want to create a transition of color or we want to add a little bit more variety in the color while it's still wet of course you want to apply wet watercolor into uh, a wet surface which is referred to as wet into wet although this is more of a controlled wet into wet approach so we're going to go ahead and move our way up to the top of the body of the iguana, of course, and address the head. We've got uh, at least some of our initial applications covering the body. Of course, we're going to come back to the lower part of the body. But for now, we'll go ahead and do some work up here on the head. I'm going to start with our mixture of Indian red. And of course, there's a little bit of yellow ochre and some cadmium orange in there as well. And we'll start making applications up here. We're going to be layering the colors up here at the top of the head so that we have got a little bit more depth and uh, more interest in the color of course so we're going to add some greens and purples up here as well but for right now we're focusing in mainly on the oranges now i know this isn't a bright orange here that we're adding here it's more of an earthier orange but it's still going to read um, as an orange so it's still going to make sense with a secondary scheme of purple orange and green now you can see I've pulled out a little bit more of the purple lake and I'm applying this over the top on the right side of the head here. And again, we're gonna allow for a little bit of a gradation or a slow change from this color to the more orangey color to the left.
Now, just like with any drawing or painting medium, there is some patience involved here. So uh, just work slowly and take your time. And for me personally, I like to uh, gradually layer the colors to build up the depth and the color. And if I put down a color that seems a little bit too intense, like you just saw, I'll reach in with a paper towel and lift it up quickly so that uh, I'm assured that I'm putting down the correct intensity of the color. We can always go back with additional layers over the top of our applications, but of course, if we get too intense or too dark with our watercolor applications it's really hard to go back on that after the watercolor has dried but of course, even though I'm being careful not to get too intense with my applications too early on, I am gradually starting to become more intense with the application. So we do want our color to appear bold when the final painting is complete, uh, but we just don't want to get there too quickly. So I am just taking my time layering these applications and uh, gradually building up the intensity in the color. So as we're laying these purples down over the top of some of the oranges that we already have in place, you can see how that color starts to become more interesting and more complex. And that's really what we're after here with this approach to watercolor painting, this layered approach. We really want to build up some interest and complexity in the color by layering colors on top of each other and allowing them to optically mix on the surface. Up here on the head, of course, where we have some lighter values, we're going to put some light washes. We're going to allow some of the white of the paper to show through to make sure that that value stays light. But we're also going to incorporate some oranges and greens up here as well, in addition to the purples. Now, of course, iguanas have a wonderful variety of different sizes and different shapes of scales on their body. And they have these wonderful large scales right underneath their mouth. And in this particular case, we're going to pull out some additional color here. We're going to allow for there to be some purple and green here and we'll intensify that in just a moment but for now a light wash will do and then we'll go up to these little these larger scales i believe is what they actually are but they look like horns we're going to add a bit of a purple shadow underneath there as well so you can see i'm pretty much pushing the uh, the colors that i actually see in the reference so i'm not following the colors that i see exactly i'm making them a little bit more intense in areas and also i'm being a little bit creative with my color application here as well um, but i think that's important i think it's important to sometimes and many times actually to deviate from the reference and create your own piece of artwork uh, you know we we shouldn't um, we shouldn't make ourselves just replicate what we see we should uh, of course put our own little artistic touches on what we see and a lot of times that means pushing the colors that we see here I'm getting a little bit more intense with uh, some of those red oranges that happen on the uh, upper chest, uh, the neck area of the iguana, if you will, and I'm using mainly the Indian red to do so. Uh, uh, at this point, my applications underneath have dried, so I'm applying wet watercolor to a dry surface, but of course we can still see some of those colors underneath, so there's still some optical color mixing that happens here. And really there's no other medium like watercolor in being able to create this effect where you're creating these translucent glazes over the top and still being able to see the white of the paper, which of course is affecting the value. Here a bit more green is layered over the top of some of the more purple areas on the right side of the body. And then we'll get a little bit more intense with the green on the left side of the body as well. Of course, the light source is originating from above and slightly to the right of the iguana. This means that the shadowed areas are gonna exist mainly on the lower portion and the left side of the body. So our colors can be a little bit more intense on the left side, which means the values are also gonna be slightly darker as well. Now working our way back down to the leg here, we're gonna make the color a little bit more intense here. Again, using our combination of cadmium orange and yellow ochre right on top of that yellow green that we already have in place. Now 
And you'll notice at this point in time, I've been sticking with a medium sized brush. I would consider this a medium sized brush. Some people are going to consider it a small brush and some are going to consider it a large brush, depending on how you like to work. But at this point, it's time for me to switch over to the smaller brush. So I believe this is a zero zero round brush. And the brush I was using before, I think, is a size four. These are Grumbacher Golden Edge brushes. So it's important to keep in mind that depending on the brand that you use, the number designation is going to be different. So a double zero brush in Grumbacher is going to be different from a different brand. So just keep that in mind. But a double zero brush is a relatively small brush. This brush obviously is going to allow me to get in here and start doing some detail work uh, throughout the the image. Now, I have mixed a slightly darker version of the red orange that I'm adding here. And to get this darker version, I just basically added a little bit of dark brown or burnt umber with just a touch of a dark blue uh, like ultramarine. You could also use Prussian blue and that will give you a more natural looking black, so to speak. And then you can mix it with the color that you want a darker version of. Here a little bit more of a darker purple lake in this particular section and it will give you those darker values that you need. Now we do need some darker values here. We need to uh, increase the contrast, meaning we need to make the, the lighter side of the iguana appear a little bit lighter. And to do that, we're going to make uh, some of the darker values a little bit darker. So at this point, we've been relying on the pen and ink to make some of the darker values, but uh, now we need to start working with the watercolor to make some of the values a little bit darker as well. And this, of course, is going to broaden our range of value which is going to lead to a more visually pleasing and stimulating image, of course. You can also see that I've also intensified the orange in areas, and now I'm adding a bit of green. As I mentioned, I would a little earlier on in the process. I told you that I would have some greens, oranges, and purples even in the head of the iguana. And then working our way down to the shadowed side of the mouth here, you can see I'm leaving a, a, a slight edge there where we have a highlighted section, which is, uh, of course, representative of what we see in the photo reference. But as we work down to the scales underneath the mouth, I'm going to have a little bit more variety in the color here. So I'm going to allow for a little bit more green to show through, a little bit more of the orange, and a little bit more of the purple. So our colors are going to be just a little bit more intense, which hopefully will lead to a livelier image. Now, even though I typically follow a structured approach to creating a watercolor painting like this, a really any colored image, um, I find myself going back and forth between different areas within the picture plane simply to create a little bit more harmony and also to push a little bit for a variety within the scene as well. So as you develop your image, don't be afraid to go back to areas that you've already addressed and make adjustments. Of course, you're going to find that uh, you're going to need to make value adjustments a lot of times. So value is the darkness or lightness of a color and value is relative. So that means that we understand value based on the values around a specific value. So as we get darker with our image in this particular case, we might find that we need to go back and increase contrast in other areas or adjust values. And that's why it's important to uh, basically work around the picture plane as you go. Even though I've gone back to the top of the picture plane and I'm working my way down, uh, I'll still find myself bouncing around. That's perfectly acceptable. Uh, so you're going to continue to tweak and make adjustments throughout the painting process. You can see now I've gone back to those larger scales and uh, now we're going to intensify some of the colors a little bit more to just bring out a little bit more color. You can see hints of that in our photo reference, um, but we're going to make those just slightly more intense here in the painting. So a little bit of purple here is dabbed down and uh, spread out a little bit with a smaller brush. And again, this initial application is pretty light, but still the color is fairly intense. And then we can kind of blend and create a little bit of a transition with just a touch of water on the brush. And then you can see that wet into wet application, even in that small area, how that color just bleeds out, makes it a little bit more interesting. We'll add a touch of uh, slightly more intense, cooler green down here as well. And then again, with just a touch of water on the brush, we can move that around.
Of course, how much water you have on the brush and on the surface is going to affect how much bleeding occurs, but of course you have control over things to a certain degree. You can always uh, swoop in with the paper towel uh, in your hand, of course, and lift up some of the color if things get a little too intense too quickly. So you can see the pattern that I've created here with these colors is slightly different than what we see in the reference, and that's of course perfectly acceptable. I'm going to add a little bit more green to this particular area and have a few of these scales just be a little bit more intense and green. Again, this is another deviation from the reference. You should always feel free to deviate from the reference. A lot of times, uh, in fact, in nearly every case, when we allow ourselves to be more creative with what we create, uh, whether it's a drawing or painting or sculpture or whatever it is, um, the result is a lot better than what we started with and maybe even what we had planned in our mind to begin with. So allow yourself some freedom. Don't be too stiff with the creation process and allow your artistic voice to show through, which is somewhat like your personal signature. It's all different for each person. Each person's going to have their own unique artistic approach to creating art, no matter what medium they use or, or no matter what subject they cover. So here, just intensifying some of the colors, uh, adding a little bit more depth through the color at the lower part of the picture plane, and then we're going to go back and intensify some of the shadows here. Now I've simply mixed up a darker version of our Indian red here, again by combining a dark blue and a dark brown. Uh, you can use a burnt umber mixed with an ultramarine or a, a burnt umber mixed with a Prussian blue or any other dark blue to create a darker version. It's basically um, a process where you're creating your own black, but you have a little bit more control over that black. If you want to make it cooler, you can add more of the blue. If you want to make it warmer, you can add more of the brown, of course, and then mix it with your color. So I typically like to avoid using black, especially in a watercolor painting, but if you mix a black it of course is a little bit more natural looking here a bit more intensity added to some of the scales again with a brighter yellow green and also on the upper portion of the head here again just a little bit more variety more intensity in the color as well and we'll do the same thing in a couple of other areas throughout the painting just intensifying the color here and there A little bit more of our earthy orange over the top of some of that dried green at the bottom. And then of course a bit more shadow here underneath these interesting scales on the side of the head here. Just bringing them out a little bit more with some additional contrast. And again we'll continue to work to make some of those shadows a little bit darker on the neck or the upper chest of the iguana here. Again, making a little bit more contrast happen between our lighted side or our lighter side of the iguana and the darker or shadowed side of the iguana as well. Just pushing that range in value and also that contrast. Now, after letting the watercolor dry a bit, I see that uh, I want to go back and make some additional contrast happen between the patterns in the darker sections on the lower part of the beard of the dragon. So I've returned here with the pen and ink over the top of the watercolor applications. Again, the watercolor is completely dry at this point, and I'm just going back in with the ink, making some of the values a little bit darker. Again, I'm using hatching to do so. And now our watercolor and pen and ink image of an iguana is complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Remember, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on that notification bell so you're notified when we upload new videos. And don't forget, you can check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free. There's a link in the description below. You'll also get updates when we upload new videos and lessons to our website. As always, thanks so much for watching, and as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.